from the corner of Augusta Street and Jones Avenue in the heart of the Augusta Road neighborhood of Greenville, South Carolina. Welcome to the worship of God with the people of Augusta Road Baptist Church, a loving, inclusive Christian community that lives out its faith through transformative relationships, engaging worship, radical hospitality, and faithful service. Thank you for joining us for this online worship experience on the second Sunday of the season of Advent, a season of great anticipation, of hope, peace, joy, and love, as we recognize the work of God through the coming of Jesus Christ. We pray that you are blessed in this season, and we invite you to connect with us and to let us know that you are taking part in this experience. You can do that by commenting below, by liking the video, and by sharing it with others. And we would also invite you to continue to find different ways to connect with our community of faith through our website, our church app, and our Facebook page. If you have questions about what is going on in the life of our church, or if there are different ways that we can reach out directly to you and be the community of faith that you need in this time, I do hope that you will let us know. Also, if you are looking for a place to worship in person, we continue to gather at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning on our church campus. Now to ensure everyone's well-being, as long as the temperature and weather permit, we will continue to gather outside in our parking lot. We ask that everyone wear masks, observe social distancing, and bring your own chair. Now all are welcome among us. And we also want to ensure that the most vulnerable populations are able to worship with us no matter what. So each Sunday, we will be broadcasting our worship experiences live on a radio transmission on FM channel 94.1. That can be heard from our church parking lot. Just drive into the lot, find a parking place that allows you to see the worship leaders and tune your radio to worship with us from the safety and the comfort of your own vehicle. No matter what, we promise to resource you with opportunities for worship in person and online that fit your needs. So if you would like a DVD of one of our services, or if you may know someone who is without an internet connection that could benefit from having one of the DVDs of worship experiences that you find online, contact us at the church office and we will provide those for you. Thank you again for taking part in this worship experience. No matter who you are, you are welcome among us as our sister or our brother. Our prophetic reading for the second Sunday of Advent comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. From the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Get up to a high mountain. O Zion, herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. On this second Sunday of the season of Advent, we worship the God of love and mercy who came to us in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, which means God with us. We lift our hearts in praise and thanksgiving for God's loving presence in our lives. God has formed us in God's own image, and through the work of Christ, God continues to transform us as we grow in faith. On this day and every day, we pray that God would break through the darkness in our lives and let the light of love flood in. 
that we may become better disciples of Jesus Christ, who came and will come again. Welcome to worship, and the peace of Christ be with you. There is a word for this. What I breathe deep in the morning light, there is a word, shalom. My father taught it to me. One day, when I was just a small boy, I was troubled about some thing. I don't even remember what it was. My papa, seeing that, laid his hands on my head and said to me, Shalom, my son. Do you know what that means? Yes, I told him. It means peace. Then my daddy knelt down next to me. He took my face in his shepherd's calloused hands and said, Yes, peace, but more. He put his finger on my heart and said, Quietly, but surely, Shalom, boy. God's highest and most complete good be upon you. That is what I pray for you. He left me this staff I use every day. I have looked for it, what he told me. Shalom, all these years. Even when it seemed that darkness had settled over my weary world, I looked. The, the night the angels came, there was no hint of wind, no clouds, just stars. He showed himself to us. Suddenly, one angel, brighter than the stars. He spoke, Do not be afraid. There is great news. Your Savior has been born. He lives in a manger. And then, quiet for a moment, as if the whole world was waiting to breathe, a Savior God's highest and most complete good upon me, upon us. Suddenly, multitudes of angels shattered the silence. Glory, 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 God's peace on the earth. What my father prayed, I have seen. Finally, shalom. Peace. Our lists are long, even in this strange mess where we live these days, and we want to do it right. We want to be safe, but we want to be able to enjoy the season. We've got work to do to put right what has gone wrong, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare for the one that comes to us all. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. Peace is to be found. What we need to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. Today we light a candle of peace as a sign of our faith that the God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for that God to come and dwell with us. We light this candle in faith that Christ has come and brings shalom, God's peace, to all who will receive him. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 13. O Lord, Thou didst show favor to Thy land. Thou didst restore the captivity of Jacob. Thou didst forgive the iniquity of Thy people. Thou didst cover all their sin. I will hear what the Lord God will say, for He will speak peace to His people, to His godly ones. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Loving kindness and truth have met together. 
Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth springs from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. Indeed, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its produce. Righteousness will go before him and will make his footsteps into a way. Let us pray. God of love, God of peace, we come to you this Christmas season, wanting to be filled with the joy that comes with the season. If we are honest, however, many of us are tired in turmoil and in pain. As the nights have grown longer, so has the darkness of our trials grown and wrapped itself around our hearts. This season brings with it not only celebrations, but also long nights. When we ask for your healing blessings upon all that carry in their hearts, sorrow and fear that may never end, and wounds that they cannot put in words. God of mercy and compassion, there are those among us who are grieving over what might have been. Death or loss or terrible hurt has changed our experiences of Christmas. We remember that once it was a special day for us too, but someone or something precious has gone away from us in this life. We've lost a beloved, a job, a goal, a cause, a dream. We find ourselves adrift and alone. We are weary from the journey. And like Mary and Joseph, we have found no room in the inn, it seems. And we come to you seeking rest and peace and shelter from the storm. God of grace, in the spirit of the season, grant us all that we need to comfort us as we journey through this Christmas season. We ask that you shelter and sustain us all, both here and throughout the world, who wander and want or weep or are heavy laden, that we may be lifted up in courage and journey on in your peace. God of love, in this Christmas season, we embrace and offer up to you all that used to be, which is now lost to us and cannot be again. With celebration all around us, memories of what was and fears of what may be weigh heavy on our hearts. Hold us close in your embrace. Be near to us throughout this season until the light returns and morning comes. As we give our burdens over to you, fill the void with your peaceful presence. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this day, and give your spirit charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pitter the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Hear our prayers and accept the gifts we bring to you. Humble offerings they are, O God, for we make them in anticipation of the experience of your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes offering peace to each of us and to your world. Amen.
makes you feel better when you are sad, afraid, or worried? Maybe it's a parent, a sibling, or a grandparent. When we're feeling those difficult feelings like sadness and fear, we want to feel comforted. Being comforted is a wonderful thing. See this figure right here? Do you know what it is? It's a shepherd. See his shepherd hooks right here? Do you know how a shepherd cares for sheep? Well, a shepherd watches over the sheep. A shepherd keeps the sheep safe at night from wild animals. A shepherd leads the sheep to food and water and keeps them going the right way. This shepherd right here is part of our nativity here at church. In the book of Isaiah from the Old Testament, God is called a shepherd. Listen to what it says and look at the shepherd while I read it. This is what it says about God. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. I love that image of God as comforter, as protector. It's such a peaceful thing to imagine. God helps us to feel comfort and peace, just like a shepherd helps his sheep feel the same. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, and we light the candle of peace today. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel all sorts of emotions swirling inside me. It doesn't always feel so peaceful. When I find myself feeling that way, I need to take a break and talk to God by prayers or even sitting in silence. And every time, God comforts me. Now my problems might not get fixed right away, but God gives me a feeling of calm, of peace that I cannot get anywhere else. When you are worried or sad or anxious, Tell a parent. I know they want to help comfort you. But also, tell God. God will be with you too and help you to feel peace. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for comforting us and giving us peace. Amen.
The word of God always seems to come to the people in the wilderness. It comes in that dangerous place where all hope seems to be lost. It comes in that place of wandering and despair. It comes in that place where people cry out in desperation for salvation. In moments like that, in places like that, the word of God comes as the calming presence of steady assurance in the midst of the storm. In Isaiah 40, the word of the Lord comes from the prophet and says, Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. A voice says, cry out, here is your God. The word of God always seems to come to the people in the wilderness. If there is any universal truth to the story of the chosen people of Israel, perhaps it is that if left to our own devices, we will all find ourselves in a wilderness of our own making. Or, just given time and circumstance and the nature of this life and this world, we will all find ourselves lost, without direction, not knowing where to turn, and desperately needing someone to show us the way home. The Word of God always seems to come to the people in the wilderness, even if it doesn't deserve to be heard because whether that wilderness is of our own making, or if it is simply brought on by circumstance, or if it is created by corruption and oppression, the wilderness is where the word of comfort is always needed most. And that is also where the word of God always seems to be best received. The people of Israel had not always heard words of comfort from the prophet Isaiah. Before this point, the news spoken in God's name was anything but good, it seemed. It came as words of judgment for rebellion. They turned to idols. They put their own desires before anyone else's needs, and they were cast out because of it. But living in exile after the fall of Jerusalem in 587 BCE, a new word of comfort came to them. Their punishment was at an end, and the God who called them together and led them out of Egypt was going to guide them out of their despair and lead them home again. But the cycle of rebellion continued ad nauseum. And over 600 years later, the people found themselves in the wilderness of Roman oppression, eagerly waiting to hear the words of comfort, hope, and salvation once again. They had grown tired of the wilderness, and they longed for the day when God would send the Messiah, the anointed one, to save the world and lead them out of the wilderness, never to return. And the word of God came to the people in the wilderness again. John the Baptist burst onto the scene, looking like a man who belonged in the wilderness, wearing camel's hair, a leather belt, his hair disheveled, perfectly cast as the field guide to bring the good news to a wandering people. And his actions rang forth like an echo of the words spoken to the people when they were in exile. The Gospel of Mark describes it in this way from its very first verse when it says, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean country aside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, he said, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In his commentary on this passage, N.T. Wright describes John the baptizer like someone rushing into your room while you are sound asleep and dreaming. 
Suddenly the door bursts open and a bright light shines full in your face. A voice breaking in on your dream world shouts, wake up, get up, you'll be late. And without more ado, he splashes your face with cold water and makes the point. Time to stop dreaming and face the most important day of your life. And the people responded. They came out in droves to hear what he had to say, thinking that his wake-up call was the main event. But he chose to correct the line of thinking. You think this is the end? You think this is the power of God? This is only the beginning. This is even just the beginning of the beginning. I come with water, but one is coming, the one from true power of God, and he will wash you with the Spirit. That Spirit will wash over you. The word of God has always come to the people in the wilderness. And sometimes it's a voice of judgment. Sometimes it's a voice of comfort. Sometimes it is the herald's cry of preparation. Mark Allen Powell says that whether it came from Isaiah or John the Baptist or Jesus himself or anyone else for that matter, the message has always been clear. Tell my people to get ready. Prepare the way of the Lord because I'm coming to them whether they are ready or not. I will come to my people and nothing, nothing will keep me from them. Mountains will be torn down, valleys will be filled in, whatever it takes. That's how desperate God is to get to us and bring us the peace that we all so desperately need. And in the person of Jesus Christ, the word of God came like never before. A new day dawned. A new era had begun. A day and time in which God had entered human history in an unprecedented way. It is that day that we celebrate during Advent and at Christmas. It is a day of all the things we proclaim. Hope, peace, joy, and love for all people. For though we have all been in our own wildernesses, or one great global collective wilderness for the last nine months, whenever it was, God has heard our cry. And upon hearing our cries, God has broken into the world in the person of Jesus Christ in the same way that light breaks into darkness. Comfort, oh comfort my people, here is your God. The word of God always seems to come to the people in the wilderness. Because that is where we need to be reminded that as thick and as overwhelming and as treacherous as the wilderness that we're in may seem, we never face it alone. God has always been with the people in the wilderness, leading them in pillars of cloud and fire, calling to them through prophets, offering them the salvation of Christ, and baptizing them with the penetrating baptism of the Holy Spirit that they might never walk in the dark wilderness alone again. The good news to people in the wilderness is that God is there among them. God has always been among them. God will always be among them. Because God has always been among them, they will be brought home to the land of promise. The Messiah will come to them. The kingdom of God is at hand and on the move among them. And they will be clothed with the Spirit and with power. And that is just the beginning of the good news. For so many reasons. We may find ourselves wondering right now, where in the world is God? And Isaiah and the writer of Mark seem to tell us that God is already here, already among us, and always has been, if we know what to look for. In verse 9, Isaiah says, Go up to a high mountain and lift your voice in praise. Declare to the people, here is your God. Not someday or somewhere else. Here is your God right here and now. As I heard one pastor put it so well, the shepherd who gathers us up in his arm is already shepherding us here and now. We are already in his arms. We've all lost so much. The world is incredibly confusing, and perhaps in some ways it always has been. But the God who created, the God who redeems, the God who sustains has not gone anywhere. In the suffering, in the moments that feel like exile, in the times of confusion, pain, and loss, God is with us. God is already at work making it possible for us to feel God's peace in the midst of it all. There's a song by recording artist Lauren Daigle that asks, even seems to cry out, where are you now when the darkness seems to win? Where are you now when the world is crumbling? Oh, I, I hear you say, look up, child, look up, child. 
where are you now? When all I feel is doubt, where are you now? When I can't figure it out, oh, I, I hear you say, look up, child, look up, child. And then in a sense of assurance, the song responds, you're not threatened by the war, you're not shaken by the storm, I know you're in control. Even in our suffering, even when it cannot be seen, I know you're in control. Oh, I, I hear you say, look up, child, look up, child. I hear you, I hear you calling my name. Look up, child, look up, child. Look up, look around, open your eyes to see God at work. Both Isaiah and John the Baptist call us to open our eyes and look around. Don't simply long for the return of some glorious past or wait only for a future when God will come again and straighten everything else out. The promise of comfort is a proclamation of God's presence with us here and now, showing up in the most unlikely places when we least expect it and in ways that often seem very ordinary. Even John spoke of one that was coming so the people should repent and do justice and confess and be baptized and Even as he told them to get ready, he didn't seem to quite realize that the Messiah was already there among them. Jesus was right there. Emmanuel was right there. And maybe they didn't see him because he looked so ordinary. God came to be with us in Christ, that we might see the light shining brightly in the darkness so that we would see that there ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, Ain't no river wide enough to keep God from getting to us. The highway will be made plain, and Christ will deal with the changing and treacherous terrain of our lives and our world, and will walk it with us. We just have to open our hearts. Someone once said that the incarnation, God coming in flesh in Jesus, is God moving into our tears and our laughter, our joy and our sorrow, our fear and our courage, our life and our death, because only in the odd mixture of these things of light and darkness do we come to see the meaning of our lives and the infinite greatness of God's love and mercy. On this second Sunday of Advent, we need a good news message that no matter what we feel or what our current circumstances are, We need to know of God's love that brings us peace. We need peace in our lives to relieve us from those things that torment us, that give us stress, that plague our hearts. In the midst of debate and dissension over issues that divide, we need peace. And families torn apart by mistakes and unfortunate circumstances, we need peace. In hospital rooms, in doctor's offices, in funeral parlors, we need peace. In classrooms, and office cubicles, we need peace. In the deepest part of our souls, we need peace. Because of the birth of Christ, we may just find the peace that we need. For this is the season in which we remember that in Christ, the kingdom of heaven has come near. And we pray for each other. God's peace be with you, hanging on that promise that Christ will give us peace in the midst of all our storm, peace that continues to be given to the world even today. And this is what makes the first sentence of Mark's gospel so impactful. As simple as it is, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is shown as the first verse of Mark's gospel in most modern translations of the Bible, at least in English. Mark himself may have actually intended it to serve as the title for the entire work. Not simply its opening sentence. All that Mark recounts in the life, ministry, sacrificial death of Jesus Christ is only the beginning of the good news. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And the implications of that story, the implications of what God has done and is still doing through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus continues today. The power of the good news continues even today. Even now, especially now, as David Lose points out, we are grappling with what some call COVID fatigue and anxiety about the future and feeling stuck in place and perhaps despairing at the state of the world so contrary to God's will and wondering when or even if we'll come through all of this. This pronouncement, this promise from Mark is good news. God is not done yet. God is still at work. And God is at work even and especially through us. This is the beginning. 
the entire Christmas story with his declaration that God's peace has been made manifest among us may be the climax of this season, but it's only the beginning. It invites us if we are willing. It actually launches us into participating in God's ongoing work to love and bless the world. As Lowe says, it comes through any and every gesture of love, big or small, clearly impactful or hard to discern whether it had any impact at all. Because God's gestures offered in love participate in the ongoing work of God, who is love, and who sent Jesus both to exemplify that love and to redeem the world in and through God's love. He says we're not helpless, even among this pandemic. And we may find ourselves renewed in both our energy and our faith by offering these and other small gestures in love, knowing that everything Mark told us about Jesus was for just this end to draw us into the ongoing story that we may continue it here and now. For everything Mark told starts with just one word, beginning. And now it's our turn. The word of God is still coming to the people in the wilderness. We are still being called to prepare the way of the Lord. God is still here among us, fulfilling promises made long ago. And the prophet is still calling out to us for repentance. God is still calling to us to turn away from our old way of doing things that got us lost in the wilderness in the first place, to confess our sins, to respond to God's grace with faithful obedience. Why? Because this is the God who always finds us in the wilderness and leads us back home. Do you see the wilderness around you? Do you see those around you walking in the wilderness and darkness, desperately needing to hear a word from God, a word of comfort and hope? We as a church, or as God's people, who have heard the word of God in the wilderness for us, are called to fulfill the prophet's words in Isaiah. Our communal vocation is to proclaim the good news from the mountaintops. We are called to live as heralds of good tidings, to cry out to the people walking in darkness that God is among us. We are called to cry out, Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, here is your God. We are called to work to remove the obstacles, the, the, or the mountains, the valleys, the rough places that are made easy terrain, that the Lord would come to all people. Be the voice crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. The Lord is among us in the wilderness. That is the way it has always been. That is the way it will always be. And that is just the beginning of the good news.